Hey, what's up guys? Landon here, and welcome to a really special episode of the tutorial series that I'm doing. So this is part two. So guys, you loved episode one of how to make a better base and what defenses to upgrade first, and you guys started giving me some awesome comments of what you guys wanted to see today. So for today, guys, I get so many, so many comments on Landon, what do I do with my gems? What do I boost? What do I speed up? What do I do? Because I don't want to waste them. So that's what we're going to be going over today. But before we get into the video, I just want to say I'm really sorry for not doing a bunch of videos lately. Exams are this week. I have exams Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I'm done with school. And then we're going to be doing a 300,000 subscriber live stream Thursday night. That's going to be a lot of fun. And then I'm going to try to do videos every single day for summer. So just going to be a whole lot of fun. I hope you guys are excited for all of the awesome videos coming out soon. Okay, so let's get into today's episode. So guys, getting gems. So first, before we go on how to spend them, we want to see how to get them. So you start off with 250 gems when you start off the game. So there's also a bunch of other ways to get gems. First way is pretty easy. You just go to the store, treasure, and you buy them. But who wants to buy gems? I mean, if you have an unlimited resource of money and you can just buy them, go ahead. Don't even watch this video. Just blow, <laughs> blow gems. But for those of you that can't, which is most of you, can't just drop... 14,000 gems every time you feel like it, then you're going to want to pay attention. So number two way to get gems is to clear out the obstacles. And the Clash of Clans actually improve the obstacles where you make a lot more gems by just clearing this. They reload every day randomly and you get some really, really good gem loots from just 1,000, 2,000, 1,000 elixir, three gems, and you're just going to get a bunch of gems for just clearing some stuff up. Okay, number three way it's actually kind of interesting. People don't really think that achievements are that good of a way to get gems. But on the contrary, they actually really, really help. These third star ones, the tier 3 achievement levels, pack a really good punch. So the first major gem you're going to get from an achievement is achieving a total of 1,250 trophies in multiplayer battles for a sweet victory, which is going to give you 450 gems. That's pretty solid, and it just gets better from there. So... The achievement for getting League All-Star, getting to Crystal League is 250 gems, getting to Masters League is 1,000 gems, and getting to Champions League is 2,000 gems. That's pretty nice if you think about it, and it's really not that hard. It, Town Hall 9 or 8 even could really easily get to Masters League, get 1,000 free gems for just pushing a little bit. And there's also Firefighter, which is a little bit harder. Destroying 5,000 Inferno Towers gets you 1,000 gems. War Hero, score 1,000 stars for your clan in war battles, gets you 1,000 gems. Spoils of War, collect 80 million gold in your clan war bonus, you get 1,000 gems. So they actually really add up. So if you want to go through your achievements, that's an awesome way to get some gems. Okay, another way to get gems, you guys probably know this as well. So we're going to go to top clans, and you see that giant clan tournament. So first clan, first place clan gets 20,000 gems split between the top 10 players. Second clan gets 10,000 gems, and third clan gets 6,000 gems. They're all split between their top 10 in the clan. So every top 10 member of Quantum Web at the end of the League War is going to get 2,000 gems. I mean, that's pretty good, getting, getting 2,000 gems. But getting to the top 10 in the top clan is so difficult, and that's just not going to happen for... The majority of the players so you really can't depend on getting to the clan tournament and getting these free gems because it's going to take you a while to get your base up to that level okay guys the last way to get some gems is the clash of clans social media contest so if you guys do know about them clash of clans post on all the time on their facebook page and on their twitter and on their forum page about these competitions to get gems so the last the recent one was the karaoke competition which was actually crazy. So the winner of the karaoke contest, whoever got made the best song that had to go with the Clan War song with the pig and the hog rider, got 5,000 gems for every member of their clan. So make sure you guys go follow Clash of Clans and just be updated for their pages because that's some pretty solid, some pretty solid loot. Okay guys, so I'm just going to clear out some more obstacles and that basically describes how to get gems. So now that we have a nice little number of gems, we have to decide what we want to do with them. So when I'm deciding what I want to do with gems, I always think, what am I, go what am I trying to do in the game? Am I trying to farm? Am I trying to get my trophies up? Am I trying to farm my heroes? What do you want to do in the game? So we'll just do a little thing to start it off. 
there's this little building over here, it's a little cheeky building called the Builder's Hut. And this is so essential for upgrading your base. You start off with two Builder's Huts, and getting that third one is a huge, huge priority. If you guys don't know, Builder's Huts determine how many upgrades you can do on your base at one time. So you can upgrade, say, a storage and a cannon going up, and if you only have two builders, you can't upgrade anything else. But if you have four builders, then you can upgrade two cannons, a clan castle, and your pump or something at the same time. So it just speeds up your base growing, and it just helps tremendously. So you get you start off with 250 gems, and it's really easy to get that first builder's hut, especially with that upgrade in the obstacle gem bonus. And especially with the new gem boxes, you're getting like 30, 20 gems for every gem box. Those come up really often. you got to watch out for those. They give some really solid returns. So you really want to focus on getting that builder's hut no matter what. So once you get the third one, you see six gems in a bush. That never happened before. Before, a couple updates ago, that was one, two, or just some XP. That is huge. So guys, the third builder hut is super important. And then you get to the fourth builder hut, it gets more gems, but that is also incredibly important. But once you get four builders hut, it kind of evens out a little bit. If you're playing the game hardcore, just raiding, 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 farming, 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 making a ton of loot, then you're going to need that those five builders because you're going to want to have upgrades going on every single second, every single time, just constantly upgrading your base. But if you're not as avid of a player, but you're still playing a lot, you're still doing a nice a bunch of upgrades, then you're just going to want to even out at four. I have four builders on my second account, and that's totally fine for me. I don't really need my fifth builder. If I start playing a lot on this more, just start killing it, then I'll probably get my fifth builder. But for now, as not a crazy avid player on this second account, I'm just going to stick with four builders. Okay, and now we get to the part of boosting or getting resources. So this has been a big debate in Clash of Clans. For a while, Clash had it totally wrong. They had boosting your pumps and mines as an awful mistake. You literally lost loot for boosting which just doesn't make any sense, but now they changed it up. So I actually did a lot of math, <laughs> so I'll get to that in a second. So you see, you can fill your storages up, or you can fill your pumps, uh, or your, yeah, your dark elixir storage, your elixir storage, or you can boost your mines. So I'm going to get out my math that I was doing. So I figured out, by boosting a max level gold mine, it, it boosts it for 11 gems for 24 hours, one day. So that's going to give you 72,000 extra gold. That's pretty good. And that costs 11 gems. And getting 72,000 72, gold by doing it with the other way, by just going from shop, treasure, right here, it costs 94 gems. That's eight and a half times more gems you're going to use if you go towards the treasure way instead of just boosting your pumps. That's pretty crazy. That's a big number. So if you think about that, and if you do a little bit more math, let me get this out real fast. So... If you boost, if you're, all of your mines are pumped, or max, <laughs> excuse me, max level, and you boost them all, so you get an extra 432,000 gold. That's only for 66 gems. 432,000 gold. So, say you bought a 500 gem pack. That's 500 gems. That's 499. So, I'm just trying to show you guys the most efficient way to use your gems. So, that's 499. You could either buy, you could either fill... Because you get 500 gems, so you could go to you, you could go to treasure. Hey, 500 gems. That's gonna be like maybe 900,000 gold, something like that. Maybe oh, actually, actually like 780,000. So that'll be 780,000. Or you can boost your mines, and that'll actually give you seven. Because you have it only costs 66 gems for every single day. So 500 gems give you seven and a half days. So you have seven and a half days to boost all of your mines. Sorry, I'm getting like super, super analytical and math all here. So, so seven and a half days, and that gives you 3,024,000 extra gold. That's crazy. That's freaking crazy. And you'll, have, and you'll have 38 gems left over. That's pretty cool. So by using, just using your gems correctly, you're making an extra, because an extra 3 million, but over that extra 750,000. So you're making a huge, huge increase in your loot by just increasing your mines. But the thing about increasing your, or by boosting your mines is that you have to watch out and you have to protect them. So what I like to do is whenever I boost, I make sure I put my town hall outside so I get a free shield on my on my base. I get a free, free, free shield. Or you can even buy a shield, but I think that's a waste when you could just put your town hall outside. The enemy destroys your town hall. You get a nice 12-hour shield. You're boosting your mines. You play, eh, check it every like eight hours or something. You can just, you really don't have to play that often. Just touch, 
touch your gold store, gold bumps, and you'll get all of that extra loot. So if you want to do, if you want to boost both of your pumps and mines in a week, you can get over six million gold. Just extra. That is extra gold. That's such double. That's crazy. So you can get a ton of loot by doing that. So Landon, what about boosting your barracks or boosting your troops or boosting your buildings and finishing upgrades? So this is what I like to do. We have to go back to where I said you have to think about what you want to do. So think about what you want to do. Do I want to get trophies? So say I want to get trophies. What am I going to want to do? I can either trade up my troops and just gem some troops. I could speed up my barracks or I could go to my research lab, speed up a troop, upgrade it, whatever. So when I'm, when I'm trophy hunting, I like to have all of my troops already upgraded enough because I don't want to trophy hunt and try to do some upgrades at the same time for my troops. That just doesn't make sense. So you want to farm until you have enough upgrades where you're ready to push, and then you're going to go, you're going to see your comp. So if I'm using the Bart strategy right there, just barbarians and archers, that's going to be super fast to gem up. So that probably the best idea is to just gem these troops because that'll probably cost like a total of like 24 gems for each raid. And if you're bringing in... 250,000 loot of just gold and 250,000 of elixir for each 22 gems that is super worthwhile but if you're going to be using a harder army comp like where you need spells and stuff you're going to want to boost boost your spell factory boost your army camps and just constant raid you're going to get like a two hour block and just raid 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 it's going to help you with trophies it's going to gain you a lot of loot but it's just the better way because you're not wasting gems. Because if you're doing a really, really long, you're having pekkas and dragons in your armies, then gemming it, it's going to take a really, really long time. But if you have troops training and you have your army camps boosting while you're looking for bases, then you'll get a raid, you'll get back, you'll be able to raid again, get back, raid again, and get a like, good solid eight, six, seven raids on it, which will really, really help your base. So when do you want to boost your buildings or boost your upgrades? So I really don't like boosting my upgrades or boosting the time. If it's an essential troop, like if I'm upgrading my Barbarian King and I know that I need him badly, then I'm going to boost and I'm going to finish the upgrade. But if I'm upgrading like a Dark Elixir storage to the next level and it's not my main priority to get that, then it's just wasting gems by upgrading it. You just got to really concern yourself because you don't want to waste gems because they are very hard to get. I've shown you guys ways that you can get them, not too bad, but... You want to conserve them as much as possible and use them as effectively as possible. So I hope this video kind of gave you a better idea of how to do them and kind of how to get your best, get the best possible result out of using your gems. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to show this video some love by smacking that like button. Let's see if we can't get 3,500 likes for this tutorial video. And make sure you guys tell me in the comments down below what video you guys want to see for the next part of the tutorial series. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.